Good morning, my friends. It's Sunday, August 4th, and I'm here with you at the Rising of the Sun. This is a painting, again, by Isaac Levitan, and it is called Moonlit Night, The Big Walk. Moonlit Night. I used to stare at my wind out my window as a little girl and look at birch trees. I find them so beautiful. And here they are guiding someone along a path. What path do you walk? What choices have you made, forks in the road in your life, that have led you to where you are? How do we know the best way forward? Today is our day of worship, and in 2 Samuel, we continue this incredible story about David and Bathsheba. David has taken Bathsheba as his wife because he desired her as she bathed upon the roof. He slept with her, got her pregnant, and then made sure that her husband, an honorable general in his army, was killed in battle. David does all this rather unconsciously because he believes that he can take whatever he wants. So the prophet Nathan comes to David, and in a brilliant conversation, the prophet Nathan shows David what he has done. But he doesn't show him by criticizing. He doesn't show him by being straightforward. He talks about it in the abstract first. He tells David a story of a poor man who owned one ewe lamb and a rich man who owned many lambs. And the rich man takes the poor man's lamb and slaughters it for the feast. And David gets very angry at the injustice of it all. He can see it clearly because it has nothing to do with him. And then the prophet Nathan reveals the point of the story in those simple words that we know so well. You are the man. How often we don't know how to reflect upon our very selves. We don't see ourselves clearly at all. And... That makes sense in the physical world. Without mirrors, we couldn't look at ourselves either. But it's very difficult for us to see our actions, our mental health, our decisions, whether they were good or bad. Nathan is brilliant because he does this in a way that engages David. David is not threatened. He listens to the story with an open heart. And when he learns its purpose, he repents. He really does. He, he changes his mind. He realizes he's done something terrible. And he still has to suffer the consequences of his actions, but he remains to the end a faithful and good king because Nathan was able to make him see himself as a broken human being. Repentance does not mean you're a jerk or it means that you've made mistakes. It means that you acknowledge that you have limitations, that you're human. It doesn't even mean that you've done anything like David, but it means you Humility is the capacity to look upon the self with a realistic understanding of who you are. Not the greatest in the world, not the worst, but a human being with faults and foibles and gifts and great wisdom. Repentance simply means changing your mind, turning around to God. And David did that with the help of this very wise prophet, Nathan. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the path that we are on. We thank you for the decisions that we've made. We thank you for the people in our lives that are wise enough to be honest with us. We thank you for their presence in our lives and we ask that you would help us to listen and to be able to reflect upon ourselves. We thank you for our bodies and minds, for friendship and love. I will pause and let you give thanks for anything in your life. We ask you, Lord, to bless the sick, the suffering, those who mourn and grieve, the addicted, the mentally ill. 
I will pause and let you speak aloud the people in your life who need prayer. Lord, help us to open our eyes and ears that we may serve you, that we may walk down paths of goodwill, of service, of truth and justice. And when we head down the wrong path that you would help us to turn around and fix our ways so that we may always be following you into the light. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Have a great day.